welcome to the AI Live interview series. I'm your host, E. Vincent Martinez. We have one of the best dressed men from the fashion world joining us today. He's a regular contributor at Rolling Stone, Variety, Muse Magazines, and many others, but you probably know him best as the fashion director at Women's Wear Daily. We are so excited. Okay, I am so excited. <laughs> Please welcome Alex Badia to AI Live. Alex. Hey, Vincent, how are you? Oh, I am great. I, I, I'm so excited to sit here with you today, Alex. Thank you so much for joining us on the show. Thank you for having me. Yeah, I have to say, and I don't mean this uh, to, you know, to, to sound so, so light, but if that's your COVID hair, I am really, je I'm really jealous. <laughs> that's some good hair you got there, man. <laughs> I mean, the, the bigger the hair, the, high, the closer to fashion, right? That's what they uh, say. Well, at Women's Wear Daily, you're you're pretty you're pretty much up there already. So, <laughs> so I am very I into. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Go, no, ahead, you go, go you ahead. go, you go. I'm stuck in the '70s um, for some sort of nostalgia moment. Not that I lived the '70s because I'm not that old, <laughs> thankfully. But um, I um, I love '70s, and this is like an homage to '70s hair. Well, I love it. It works for you. I'm a little jealous. <laughs> so <laughs> I want so I know you know the movie, The Devil Wears Prada, and there's so many famous fun quotes out of that movie. One of them being a million girls would kill for this job. Well, <laughs> I think you know where I'm going with this. I think a million girls and boys would kill for your job. <laughs> so with that said, would you talk to us a little bit about your role at Women's Wear Daily uh, as fashion director? Describe your role as fashion director. I, um, this, I mean, I always was asked this, I've been asked this question before, obviously, but I, I can never, my answer constantly changes. Um, I do think that um, it's never the same answer, especially now. My job is uh, uh, like a fast moving vehicle, basically, right now, and uh, more than ever. Uh, today, for example, I'm just going to tell you what I did so far today. Um, I am on lockdown still, although we go out to do some shoots and some physical shows and appointments. Um, but today, for example, we're shooting the first exclusive preview of Fendi by Kim Jones. As you know, he took over as creative director of Women's Wear we, together with Sylvia Fendi. And um, we have the exclusive and it's coming out tomorrow. This is how we work. My uh, soldier at, um, there, let's say, we call them soldiers because this is not a glamorous job, to be honest. Um, we have uh, my Alessandra Turra, that is my fashion editor there, and um, we, who is calling me right now, as, by the way. Um, uh -oh. Sorry for that. Uh -oh. And she is, um, uh-oh, um, she just left Fendi. She just shot the preview. They gave us two looks. She sent it, we, she, we, I was like live on her phone, selecting, talking to Kim Jones on the phone, hoping this would end before we had the conversation with you today, and it did, thankfully. But um, so we actually just um, finished the preview. This is tomorrow's co cover. Just this is a good example of how close we, we work with publishing date, um, because being a news-driven organization, we, you need to roll with the punches and you need to go really fast but at the same time you need to create what we call SOE that is a search optimization um, uh, stories and it's basically um, stories that are going to really engage a larger population so the SEO stories are going to be basically things that a larger reader, not only the industry, is going to read. Because right now with social media and um, websites as an overall, a lot of people that are not subscribers read Women's Way Daily. We have a reach of 6 million people and people are really hungry for the latest news. And I'm sure your students read Women's Way Daily and they're very knowledgeable. But I was just trying to digest New York Fashion Week trends or American fashion trends uh, that uh, they've just been renamed. So 
for a larger population. So what we're trying to do right now is basically, and I was talking to one of my market editors in New York, how can we divide the trends and become more appealing to a larger population, to a larger reader. So, um, so we need to think of cultural events that we can bring back into it. Basically, New York Fashion Week was all about transition, the transition into the outside world. Uh, so we kind of like trying to contextualize things. Then I also talk about what are the key accessories of the season. I love that you have that picture there because red gloves is definitely one of the accessories of the season. I love that Jason Wu, you have great images there, by the way. Um, well done. So, um, so I, I just think that we are... We talk about accessories, also have a denim story coming out, I have a sunglass sh story coming out. Those means that those are shoots that we need to plan. So my day changes every day. We are um, talking about what's happening on the ground in the fashion weeks. I normally would be in Milan right now, but we're doing it digitally. But at the same time, we need to repackage the stories into an SEO friendly, things that are going to reach a wider, a wider audience. And also thinking of like trends and planning for shoots that we are constantly doing that. So yeah, it is sort of a, it is a constant, you need to love it. I, uh, I think that that's the key for me. You need to love it oh, because it's, it's a time, oh, it's a full time forever job. You clearly love it. And I tell you, I'm one of your followers. I mean, I follow you on Instagram, which is at the Alex Badia. I follow Women's Wear Daily as well, you know, at WWD. And I get a lot of my fashion news from both of you. And your Insta stories yeah. are pretty good too, let me tell you. Thank you. <laughs> so Thank you. make sure Thank you guys are following Alex on Instagram. And while I do want to speak with you about menswear and trends and trend forecasting. Um, I do want to jump into something a little bit more personal, and that is your own sense of fashion, Alex, because if you go, anyone that goes through your Instagram feed, I mean, you clearly love fashion. You know what works for you. You know how to style it and how to wear it. And I, I think sometimes talking about your own personal style is, could be kind of difficult. Um, but I mean, you are a living expert in the field. Uh, so would you talk to us a little bit about your own personal style or your own personal fashion style? Um, yes. Um, thank you so much, uh, Vincent. That's so kind of you. Uh, first of all, um, yes, I am sort of fearless. I, I am bored. I was very afraid. For many years, I don't know how to explain this. I knew so much about fashion. I didn't. I was just fear. I, I was a little bit afraid of um, how to express myself personally uh, with fashion. But I, th I don't know. It's just like something changed when I got a little older, and I thought I have so much to say. I want to really have my own point of view, and um, because I saw a lot of the things changing. Um, outside the shows, during the shows, uh, th that editors became opinion leaders at a different level. So I just thought that um, it is, at that point I was on my 30s and I was going into my 40s and I felt that there was such a lack of um, guidance and uh, such a lack of uh, what defines an, a, a man on his mid to late 30s. How can you really redefine rules? Right. I felt that there was, there was no icons to look up to, there was no guide. And I felt, I mean, I have it all within me. I have so much to say. I wanna not be pitchable in one thing. I don't think that fashion is only for, I'm talking about my personal experience. And I don't think that fashion is not only for the 20 year olds. And I think that it's about being free and being brave and push forward. And I don't think that I wanna be uh, narrowed in one specific style. I mean, obviously, I love layers. I love belting. I love winter. I love coats. I love outerwears and overall. I love big volumes. I don't like traditional um, rules, but I do think that following heritage is important. I um, I don't like boundaries uh, when it comes to your personal style. I do think that your personal style is an evolution of who you are as a person. I think that you shouldn't feel um, 
confined to anything specifically. I'm very affected by the fashion that I see outside of me. I am very affected uh, by old pictures of my grandfather and my father. The men in my family were always very stylish. Um, I have amazing images of my granddad uh, from the early 1900s in, um, in Spain. I'm Spanish from Barcelona. My granddad lived in Paris and in, in, in Milan. He was a furrier. He was a very elegant man. And I do think those images are at the base and at the epicenter of who I am. But everything else, I don't like. I just don't like. I think that when it comes to, to personal style, I don't think people should feel confined to one thing only. I think you should be able to evolve and put things in there when you feel appropriate and you just need to have a good time. One thing that is for sure is that I don't like to take things seriously because life is too short to be serious at that level. I think you need to have fun with fashion, you know? You need to have fun with fashion. I I agree with you 1000%. I mean, my own personal style has evolved over the years. I mean, I was a kid. during the disco era in the late seventies, I went through the whole new wave, you know, movement, uh, in, uh, here in America. And, um, I love fashion and, you know, I just, I do it like you do the best to just express myself and not be too fussy and just to kind of have fun with it now in my fifties. So, um, I, what you just said definitely resonated with me personally. So thank you for that. Um, it's true because there's no, no, there's really not a person that you can look up and say, okay, that guy, he's doing it the way I want to be. He's, especially when you get a little older, of course, I want to dress like Harry Styles, but I don't, I, I don't, I, I also at the same time, I don't want to dress like Harry Styles because it's not who I am in my life right now. But, um, I just think that yeah. like, there's many ways that you can sort of like be yourself. Yeah. So this time last year. I, I was at New York Fashion Week, and um, I mean, I go every season, and this time last year, we were just really hearing about COVID here in the, in the U.S. I remember, you know, getting on my flight. I had my hand sanitizer. I don't think I had a mask. It was still February, and, you know, we weren't quite thinking that way, and I, it's hard to believe it's been a year now since I've been to New York, since I've been to Fashion Week, but I have to ask you. Alex, I mean, you are, you are on the front lines of fashion and uh, COVID obviously has had a global impact on every industry. The, t- uh, the fashion industry is not exempt. Uh, can you give us a firsthand account of how it really has affected fas- the fashion world, you know, the last two seasons, this season, last season? And also give us hope, you know, hopefully, possibly an optimistic look at how, you know, fashion and runway might might change or evolve in a post-COVID world. Because, I mean, we all hope that's going to happen soon. You know, I obviously feel that this has been the worst year of our lives. I mean, this has been the most difficult year of my life, that's for sure. Um, these are um, unprecedented historical times um, that I really, really pray uh, to all the gods that this never happens again, um, hopefully. Um, obviously, it has destroyed a, a big part of the fashion industry, but a lot, uh, but I want to say that a larger part of the fashion industry is also coming back. I think that um, we read in Women's Wear Daily on a daily basis in the first six months about the bankruptcies. There was uh, so many bankruptcies uh, from retailers to American heritage brands, but now they're starting to come back in the case of Brooks Brothers or J. Crew or Neiman Marcus. There is a, there is a, a new day coming. And um, there was all these conversations about, oh, fashion shows are dead, fashion goes and fashion shows I never come back. I never agreed then, I don't agree now. And it's very clear when you speak to the LVMHs and the carings of the world, how they feel very differently. Fashion shows are coming back. Fashion shows are gonna be more important than ever. So um, to the people, to the no-sayers that say that this is it, 
I'm just telling you that I don't agree. I think that fashion shows, obviously, some digital element and some videos and presentations and things that have enhanced the system will stay. But I'm telling you, Chanel will always have a runway show. And in fact, I can, I can say pretty certainly they'll have even more shows than they did before. And if you tell me that right now you have a chance of doing a show or you have a chance of doing another digital Zoom meeting, what are you going to do if you have the choice? I'm telling you what I'm going to do. I'm going to go to a show. I know what I want to do. <laughs> exactly. I'm going to go yeah, to a show. I want to go to the show. <laughs> obviously, when things are safe, when things are perfectly, when we are vaccinated, when we are in a situation in which everybody's safe, we're going to go to shows. Because you, one thing that I, I've gone to, sh I covered shows for 20 years now. I started in the year 2000 going to shows in Europe. So um, I, I just think that like in the year 2001, sorry. So I seen it. So, um, and in the past two seasons, not having shows, obviously it is really, it is sad because you love getting in inspired. You love seeing your colleagues in Europe. You like the, the, the flow of ideas are very different. It's been really interesting as a historical moment in fashion, but we, we need to get past it. We need to go back to be able to see things live. Thank you. That, and that was, the, that was the optimism I wanted to hear from you because I think we all need that right now. So, Vincent, you'll be uh, back in New York soon. You're going to be back in New York seeing shows. I am, I am, Alex, I'm so ready for it. <laughs> I can't even tell you. I am very ready for that. Um, can we talk about menswear? Me too. Can we talk about menswear? I, that is, um, sure. you know, you know, obviously I love menswear. You love menswear. Uh, we've seen it evolve over the last two, three decades or so. And I know it's one of the fastest growing fashion industries in the world now. And, uh, you know, trends and I just, you know, you, like I said, oh, like I said earlier, you're on the front lines. So you are very much of a trends forecaster. So mm -hmm. uh, let's have a little chat about menswear and how it continues to change and evolve. Uh, what are some of the uh, current trends that, that may actually stick around for more than a season? Uh, what are you seeing out there that excites you? I mean, I have to tell you, I never thought the menswear was a mystery. But I do think that menswear is a bit of a mystery. Um, I, I, I just want to say that um, I love that Dior show. It's, I, I get so distracted by images always. Um, sorry. Um, no, it's okay. I, I do too. I, I, I just love it. This is, I, I love looking to runway images. Um, I, um, I think that menswear is, as you said, is the faster growing, the fastest growing category in fashion, full stop. All the growth in department stores, in e-tailers, it's all coming from fashion. So I, from menswear, sorry. So um, menswear fashion is, is definitely at the forefront. There's so much to discover when it comes to menswear that it has been, let's say, colonized already in the women's wear world. So there's so many things that need to be done that have not been done. Um, so the range of growth, obviously, is much larger because it hasn't been as exploited and as saturated. I do think that um, when it comes to menswear, there is an overall feel. What, one thing that was so interesting is that in the, uh, in the early aughts, even in the 10s, in the 2010s, men's trends were here for a long time. When Hadi Sliman came and decided this is all about the crops, the short tight suit, we had tight suits for at least 10 years. So what happened is that those trends, they stayed here for a long time. When the industry evolves and matures, the trends become faster. I think men's wear, I, I hate comparing it to women's wear because it's a different business. It's just starting to mature yeah. and go into more of a woman's wear 
formula. So trends are moving fast. Right now, you see a lot of cross-pollination in menswear and women's wear. There's obviously the finally a gender fluidity, finally a much more of a um, multi-dimensional menswear offering. Um, when you look at um, this Fendi show, for example, or when you look at the Prada show, I am telling you one thing. If you, you've been looking, you've probably been looking at the at the Ralph Simmons um, mutual Prada shows. Um, closely as I have. We saw the men's wear one, the woman's wear is on Thursday. Look at the men's wear. You'll see the secret is there. The woman's wear is going to look like the men's wear because right now this is where we are. We are not equal, but we are equal when it comes to a lot of the trends. So yeah. softer tailoring is definitely here to stay for a while, but you never know. Softer tailoring is definitely happening. You do have pastel colors, obviously, you have um, still a bit of that soft lounge, let's call it lounge 2.0. Um, you have uniforms that are really hitting really hard, as you saw in Dior. And, um, and also you have like statement coats. Um, that is, the coat has basically replaced the suit as the star item of menswear. But again, you never know. Look at that the white project code there. It's gorgeous. So you yeah. never know what is going to happen um, in terms of the, the shifting trends. But I have to say that menswear is more exciting than ever. And right now, I when I do a men's story, I think of clothes. Obviously, I use fashion, men's fashion, but I also bring women's wear accessories in there. I bring like a whole world because the range is so wide right now. The only, listen, I love being in my 40s, but I wish I want at times that I was on my 20s to be able to really experience this in the, from the front, for, on the forefront of fashion, like, like the, 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 your students scan right now, you know? There's oh, know. no boundaries. There is no gender. It's perfect. It's exactly yeah. what I dreamed yeah. all my life. Yeah. I know exactly. Listen, I want I, more. We are... I know exactly what you mean because I see a lot of fashion and I think, damn, if I were in my twenties, I can wear this. But it, I, in my fifties, if I try to pull that off, it's not, it's not going to work quite as well as Harry Styles, for example. <laughs> I mean, I remember on my twenties, uh, no, on my teens, when I was in school, I, I was super fortunate. I grew up I was, I'm from Barcelona, but I spent a good month of my teenage years in London and also in Paris. Um, and I remember being very close to nightlife already then. And I already, rem I remember shopping uh, in the women's wear departments of, of different department stores like Debenhams and Selfridges. And, and I remember going to the streets in Camden Town on a weekly basis to buy vintage military clothing. And the kind of resources that you were able to get on the vintage markets in London in the early 90s or mid 90s were incredible. You could get like amazing royal uniforms, very similar to the ones that Chris Van Asch, I sorry, the, the ones that Kim Jones showed at Dior. So we did what we could, but um, it was just, now it's so much better. So, with all the research that you do, I mean, all the different collections that you cover, uh, let's say for this season at least, because I mean, we're just off, you know, the heels of New York Fashion Week, but uh, you know, what, like who's the latest, newest designer that is just exciting you that you're like, oh my God, they are so good. You know, I want to see more from them. Who's like who stands I mean, out? I, I mean, I, there is a woman's wear designer called Kate. Um, Kate is fantastic. She's a great intellectual of fashion. Her last show it just came out yesterday. Um, we had a Zoom call with her. She released a movie inspired by Taxi Driver. So uh, in that case, she really she really was like she's really on top of her game. That was great. Obviously, Gabriella Hurst is gorgeous. Um, I love what she's doing. Obviously, I can wait to what she does at Chloe. The needs, the neat dressing, the color, 
the monochromatic coloring that she uses is so interesting and so rich. Gabriella Hurst is great, I have to say. Those were probably my two favorites. And I have to tell you, Ulla Johnson is sort of doing great things as well. I, I always was very admiring of Ulla Johnson, but right now some of the needs that she produced were beautiful for New York Fashion Week. Thank you for that. Um, I want to, I would like to end with some words of wisdom from you, Alex, with some advice for our students. So as you can imagine, we have the art institutes, we have eight campuses over four states from Miami through mm -hmm. Texas, through Atlanta. I'm based in Atlanta. And, mm -hmm. you know, all of our students, I mean, we have fashion design and fashion marketing students. And they're lovely, they're talented, they aspire for greatness. They all want to be fashion designers, fashion stylists, fashion PR. They want to live a lifestyle which I'd say is very much your lifestyle. And they're probably, you know, they're in their. 19 years old, they're 22 year old. What would you say to them today? What should they be looking at? Uh, who should they be following on Instagram? What should they be doing? Uh, are there internships in the future? I mean, I know it's with COVID, it, things were kind of upside down, but you know, what, mm -hmm. what would you say to a uh, 20 year old in college studying fashion design or marketing right now? I mean, for me, um, the first thing you should do is ask yourself, do you love fashion? You need to really certain that you love it. Um, there shouldn't be a doubt in your mind because um, I do think that it's going to be a long road ahead and a lot of hard work. I do think that um, when it comes to your career, first of all, you need to obviously, once you decide, oh my God, I love fashion, do as much homework as you can. Read as many books about fashion, go online and research anything and everything. For me, what put me, what set me apart was that I was so always insatiably curious of history, insatiably curious of, um, the making of garments. Um, I came to fashion from a very sort of like historical references and very much like an evolution of humanity, let's say. Um, I was really interested on everything fashion. I also was obsessed from day one in fashion magazines because I grew up in a moment in which fashion magazines were everything. But I don't think that they should be discarded. I think looking at fashion magazines, it's important still. Not all of them, but some of them. Some of the European magazines or even document journal in America, it's really interesting. But fashion is everywhere. Look at the Financial Times. They just did a, a, a great interview with Mucha Prada and Ralph Simmons. Alexander De Fury, who is a friend of mine, who is a great, great journalist and a historian of fashion, interview them. I do think that it is about consuming fashion everywhere you go. Fashion is all around you. So it can be exhausting, but I, I live and breathe fashion on my daily basis, on the TV that I watch, on, 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 the, on the movies, on, on the social media that I consume. I think obviously following all the brands on social media in, um, in, but not only on, on Instagram, you need to look at TikTok, you need to look at um, Twitter, uh, YouTube, look at all the platforms. I look at everything. I have an insatiable appetite for information. So I'm always online. I'm always looking at the world through the view of fashion and it drives my husband crazy. And because um, that's the only thing I do, but um, I, I just think that it's very important as well. Even when you go on holidays, if when you or when we are able to go on holidays, I basically, uh, even if you go to anywhere, just, go to the local stores. 
even if you go to a beach resort, go and look at the person that is, or the people that are selling necklaces and bracelets and look at how people are dressing. The information is all around you. You need to just be awake for it. And, and, and obviously look at the shows, but look at everything else. But one thing, and I'm so sorry, it's such a long answer. Um, this, no, it's, it's for me, it's all about, it's about context. Look, if you're looking at the Dries Van Noten show, know that this is from the 50s. Know who did what back then. People are talking about the Roaring Twenties. We're trying to find a connection between the Spanish flu and the Roaring Twenties and how the woman's silhouette developed and how femininity was enhanced in the Twenties more than ever other time in history. And understand that a lot of the things that have happened and a lot of the things that we're looking at have a point of reference. And the more you know, the more ahead of the game you are. So, and it's not only about seeing what's in front of you, it's to understand what it comes from. And, and in, it, once you know what it comes from, you will understand where it's going. And once you know where things are going, you'll know more than the rest. Wow. Wow. Alex, yes, that was a long answer, but man, that was a good answer. It was just so authentic and passionate. So students, young people listening, you better, you better listen to Alex. He knows what he's talking about. That, thank you so much for that. But I, I've got one last, one last little question for you that I want to know. And I'm sure you have many, many, many amazing, wonderful fashion moments. But which one, which one really stands out for you? Like, which is one of your greatest fashion moments that you just reminisce about, you think about, you haven't forgotten, it's still, it's still fresh in your mind like it, like it were yesterday? I know that could be a tough one, but... <laughs> I just, when you're younger, things have a big, a greater impact on you. Um, I remember the second, I never went to the first Dior Arm show because it was the one season before my time, I think. I went to my first Dior Arm show by, um, oh my God, Heidi Slimane. Um, <laughs> and I remember it was his second show, I think, if I believe. I, yes, I'm correct. This is his second show. And the, it was so dark. And I remember um, how the show started. It was, we were in total darkness and you hear the music go and it's kind of a hard, hard techno, something that you would hear in Berlin at an after hours bar. So it was like a hard techno. And then this laser game of lights started. And this m insane rhythm of models came down the runway in the shrunken suits from the Or, And it was all referencing the movie Tron from the 80s. And I just knew it. I knew it right then, that it was kind of like an, a moment in time because I was so transported and um, I felt like I, I just really, I mean, it sounds like a drama queen, but I felt I just couldn't breathe. I, I didn't want to miss anything. I had a couple of other out-of-body experiences because for me, that's an out-of-body experience in which I'm so unconnected to what's happening and I'm so connected to the brain of the designer. And I was super young. I was in my 20s. So it was just such a moment for me. Um, but yeah, I had other moments like that, but I remember that being a special. I have to say that... I remember Annie that Lennox, show. Yes. That show was show. amazing, but I have to say that Annie Lennox singing at Dolce & Gabbana was kind of amazing. When you have like Annie Lennox singing in a piano alone in Milan for an, a, a Dolce & Gabbana show, and she's singing like Eurythmic songs and like her own solo career songs, it's yeah. also mind-blowing. That's pretty good. <laughs> I knew, I mean, I know yes. you probably have many, I, I, many, I, I, many more. <laughs> Yeah, I and do. it's and but you know, no, Alex, it's, it's it. What was that? I didn't hear you. <laughs> yeah, but nothing compares to that. Um, the moment 
to me. Yeah. I think that maybe if I had yeah. to choose one, that would be the one. Yeah. Well, I tell you, Alex, it is it is absolutely okay to be a drama queen. We all are. <laughs> so, you know, sure. I think it kind of goes with it goes with the territory. You know, by the way, I will tell you, Alex, my husband loves fashion. He loves shopping and we're the same size. So it's a win win for me. <laughs> so there you go. Excellent. Right? Excellent. We need to, we need to make it work always. I want to say one more thing that yes, I please. really learned over my years and I wish I knew then. I know this is very so difficult to comprehend, but try not to be afraid of things because um, I think we live in fear so much at times and I just try not to be afraid and just try to go for it. It's here for you to take. So don't feel that people need to offer you things. Go for it. They're here for you, but don't be afraid. I don't know how to explain it. I was so afraid at times. I just wish I wasn't, you know? I want people to feel free. The fashion yeah. is here for them, for everyone. Well, I think, I think that you are a very good example of that. You are not afraid, at least anymore. You went for it, and you got it. No. So there you go. Alex, I know you've got you. so much work to do. Uh, with, I mean, Fashion Week really is not over. I mean, uh, so I know you've got a lot, of, a lot of work. I cannot thank you enough for being on AI Live to do, uh, on AI Live today. You got me all flustered here. On the show, thank you so much for your time. And I'll keep following you on Instagram and seeing what you're up to, okay? Thank you. It was lovely talking to you, Vincent. And be guys, be good, okay? Thank you. You will. Thank you. Okay, ciao. Bye-bye. Thanks for watching our YouTube channel. I'm your host, Eve Vincent Martinez. You know, there's so much to watch right here at AILive.AII.edu. It's jam-packed with interviews with industry leaders, panel discussions, school events, and much, much more. Plus, you get to interact live with our guests in the Q&A sessions in our premier events. There are current shows, or you can delve into our archive for some interesting industry information that you may have missed in our AI Live Rewind series. So join us every week as we showcase talented professionals in your industry, creating an immersive experience and a look into your field of study. Hey, school was never this much fun. Get engaged. We're AI Live. Come check us out.